today we're getting back to the basics there we go oh my gosh what the hell did i just hook strictly an urban pond hopping mission welcome back wainers it's good to see you guys again i figured today we go fishing but uh, i went out to the barn this morning looked at the boat and thought we'll give her a rest let's grab a couple of rods two to be exact a backpack full of some soft plastics and hit it from the bank this is how i made a lot of my videos growing up i didn't have a kayak and have a boat didn't have anything i just had my own two feet and the world was my oyster i used to hop on a bike every day after school kill the last few hours of daylight and just go crank on some dinky illinois bass but i'm older now and i still love to do this i've never lost the interest to do bank fishing especially in more of an urban or suburban setting this first spot that we're at today is pretty cool it's mostly a concrete bank but you've got some pretty decent grass in here and the water's somewhat clean it's been hot muggy and a little bit rainy surprisingly here in texas so the water's a bit dingy the fishing should be difficult but that's not going to deter us we're headstrong we're stoked to get after it today and see if we can go catch some fish if we can get like five good bass today that's all that matters i've got one finesse rod one seven foot five heavy and we're gonna see if we can give it an old dibba dangle so with that being said stick with it stay tuned and join us on this urban pond hoppy mission Let's see if we can get bit Let's see if we can actually get a fish oh there we go got him there we go Little first cast on the point oh he's not bad it's pretty good fish we're hooked up first fish of the urban pond hopping mission. Really just took one cast. I'm like, this point looks good. On none other than the dragon drop too. Oh yeah, come over here, buddy. Come over here, buddy. Definitely bit a lot harder than I thought. Really healthy fish though. He's like all fat and sassy. Look at that, first fish of the day. It feels so good to get back on the bank, leave the boat at home and do a bit of finesse fishing. We have some really weird conditions. We're fishing in North Dallas right now. Pretty much everything over here is dirty and cloudy, mainly because we've had some serious rain the past couple of nights. It's not been enough to really fill out the lakes and ponds, but it has been enough to muck up the water. So we're having to really get creative today, but that's our first fish today, not a bad one. Hoping to get one that's maybe, I don't know, five, six times the size, but a uh, nice little start. Gotta walk before you run. Time to send old girl back. I'll get you later. I'll get you later. Okay, so as you know, this is a urban pond hopping mission. Everything's straight from foot today. So I'm obviously packing light. I got my backpack full of some Guggen gear in here and I've got a couple rods. So we're starting off with a dragon drop today. It works really good in these Texas ponds. Don't sleep on it. It crushes. I'm gonna another cast out there. I feel like there's probably more. This is a good little point. It's getting windblown too, which is nice. Let's see if we can get another bat. Oh, that's a fish. He just grabbed it and dropped it. Got him. Literally next cast. <laughs> Literally next cast. That's so dirty. Yes, sir. <sighs> nothing huge and that's kind of one of the downsides of a drag and drop is it welcomes in all sizes of fish even the small ones but especially to the big ones i think people are they mistaken this rig as something that is only going to catch tiny fish but that's not the case if you really weed through these tiny dudes and get down there deep where the big ones are lurking you can have some days where you catch 25 30 pounds on the drop shot but you know even myself i get so cooped up in throwing like a frog or a lunker log, a stick bait or flipping a craw. Whereas the dragon drop has a place for bank anglers. I don't think enough people throw it. And I think this is your sign. Get out there, terrorize some fish on the dragon drop. Before we get back to action, I want to share with you guys today's sponsor, that being Athletic Greens. It's incredibly easy for someone like myself who doesn't eat vegetables to eat very unhealthy. We're on the road constantly and I'm very often tempted by rest stop hot dogs and gas station burritos. But with AG1, I get my day started off right. With just one scoop of AG1, you are getting 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients made just for about everybody. Athletic Greens contains no GMOs, is gluten-free, dairy-free, corn-free, lactose-free, sucrose-free, and is made without eggs or peanuts plus animal byproducts. AG1 is a no-brainer drink if you are cognizant about your health and just want to feel better when you're in the great outdoors. It's one of the reasons why I drink it, and it's one of the reasons why I get my morning started off with a little bit of AG1 in the morning. I'm gonna get another sip. Sorry, guys. Mm. Oh, that is absolutely delicious. Go to athleticgreens.com slash John B. And with your first purchase, get a whole year supply of immune support vitamin D plus five free travel packs of AG1. Start living healthier when you're out there cranking on some fish. Without further ado, let's get back to cranking. All right third cast going out got a fresh dragon drop on there there's one there we go little guy itty bitty another tiny fish bro i'm cursed with little fish every time i hit the bank 
I am throwing a drop shot too, so that makes sense. But I'm, I'm, I'm a believer. I think there's some big ones down there. No little LM Biz. He's got the, look at his body though. That's how you know there's some good genes in here. He's like real tall, nice and fat and healthy. So this is probably a day old. He just came out the womb. <laughs> I hope, I hope, because that means if that's the case, if like there are good genetics in there, there could be some biggins. Some biggins. Dude, giant bass right there. What the f I keep seeing these like big bass like right on the shore. I don't know what they're doing. You'd think they'd be out deep this time of year, but I am seeing some bait adjacent to the bank too. I, I, I thought they were carp for a second, but they ended up being bass. That one was like a two, three pounder, good fish. And I spooked a couple more over there too. So I'm gonna run this bank with a little, uh, little blazing worm. Just do what I know how to do. Run it real shallow, see if I can get a couple to come up. I don't know, usually fish that tight to the bank this time of year usually are, are a no-go. They're not gonna want that, that sauce, but it's worth a shot. And if that doesn't work, I think we might switch to some some new ponds around the area. Good one. There we go. Decent one. Just hop in the blazing worm. Oh boy. A little heavier than I thought. Nice fish. That's a little bit better. I was just popping that blazing worm real fast in shallow water. I did not think they'd be in a couple of inches water. I did not think they'd be super shallow today, but it is slowly but surely getting cooler here in Texas. And uh, with that in mind, these fish are gonna move up and start feeding. Basically wherever the bait's at is where the fish are gonna be. So if the bait are shallow, for whatever reason, they're gonna follow the bait. Doesn't even matter how hot it is. That's a much better one. That's the one kind of we're after. I was seeing quite a few about this size and, and even much bigger earlier when we were fishing that bank. But I was like, ah, we'll go over in this corner. This area's fenced off, can't go any farther, but this guy, I made it all worth it. So later, bud. Oh, I don't know if you guys noticed this too, but this water is disgusting. Had a bit of rain plus the heat. It's created a nice algae bloom, which it's not good, but it's also not bad. I mean, it can get really bad, especially if it turns into like a green blue algae. It depletes the lakes, the oxygen. But in this case, it's like kind of bringing some nutrients in, probably bringing the, the bait fish up shallow. And that's one of the reasons why I think we're seeing fish, bass including, so shallow today because everything is kind of in that one to two foot range. Pretty interesting stuff. Is that a fish? Yeah, Turtle. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude, what are, these, what are these bass? Wait, don't move too much. It's a bass. Yeah. It's a bass. I've never seen this kind of activity before from a bass, but literally right in front of us, I think that's one of the reasons why these fish are shallow, but this bass is tailing like a redfish would. They're probably like grubbing around in the grass looking for, for craws maybe? I don't know what the hell they'd be doing. That is nuts. I've never seen anything like that. You guys probably won't believe me because you can't see it, but Caleb was like, what is that? And you can see like a little ripple on a tail and not a carp at all. These are freaking bass in the shallows, like digging around and rooting. I don't think I've ever seen that before. You guys will have to drop a comment. Let me know if you've seen tailing bass. It makes sense though, because this grass is like really dense. In order to get crawls, they have to like get in there. That was weird. I don't know what they're doing right now. I'd say that was pretty good, pretty sufficient. What did we crank, like five, four fish? One of which was nice. One of which is like in that tier that we're looking for. I'm feeling right, feeling good, but we're not done. Time to hit spot number two. All right, spot number two. This is a little bit more rural, but I mean, we are a stone's throw outside of North Texas. I'm hoping maybe we can go find some fish in here. I see some turtles. Fortunately, we're not after those today, otherwise we'd be on them. This looks like a big worm in a frog lake to me. Water looks actually pretty clean, too. You might be able to get away with a drop shot. I got three rods with me now. I brought my braid stick, big worm rod, my little worm rod. I feel very connected to the little worm rod, if you feel me. I got a little worm. Anyway, just thought I'd share something personal. There we go. That's a good one. There we go. What the hell? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know why he's coming in like that. Oh, it's a good fish. Not bad. That's a one pounder. Take it. Take it. Whoo. Look at that fish. Dang. You know what this fish looks like? It looks like a Florida strain. Very well could be. A lot of times people will stock different strains of bass. I think most people are under the impression that bass are bass, and that's not always the case. Even with largemouth, there's different strains. You got northern strain, Florida strain. Florida strains tend to look like this, really big heads, long and lean, and they're very dark. I also think the reason why this fish is so dark is because there's grass in here. That fish hammered it. See you later, buddy. <gasps> oh, 
<laughs> Did you see that? That was crazy. Yeah, that had to have been a spunky Florida strain. Pause, quick minute. We started this video off finesse fishing. One of the things I was trying to show you guys, you can catch fish from the bank on deep tactics. Here's another really good rig that I like throwing in lakes like this. If you've got a lake, whether it be up north or down south, uh, that's full of grass, try this out. Right now I'm throwing a blazing worm, one of my favorite fast moving soft plastics. And the reason why I say fast moving is this is not a worm you have to fish slow. How I like to rig it is with the tail on the bottom. So if that tail is facing on the bottom end of the hook like that, then you're rigging it right. At least I think so. That's how I personally like to rig it. I don't know, you can rig it however, however you want. But with the bottom, bottom point of the tail being face down, you get a better action. I've got this on straight braid, 30 pound test braid, because I'm ripping it through the grass. I've got a peg, but the peg is slid up a bit. So when that weight hits the uh, peg, keeps it right there, but then the bait kind of floats above the grass. It's all about personal preference, but get this. The reason why the blazing worm is so clutch for bank fishing is because you get to fish it fast. Bank fishing, you got to cover water. You're not on a boat. You can't just put the the, you know, the Mercury 250 and, and get on pad. You got to use your feet and you got to fish fast and cover water. So one way I like throwing the blazing worm is finding a nice grass patch. I'm actually fishing a grass edge right here, casting it out there, letting it sink. And then I'm working it aggressively. This is a lure that you can strictly just burn back to the back to the bank or back to the boat. You don't have to fish it like a big curl tail or like a drop shot. Like I'm giving it a lot of nice pops, letting it sink down giving it some pops and you can get some really aggressive bites out of it. But the reason why this is great for bank anglers is because you can fish an area fast, cover water, especially in these warm months and these fish are up, they're, they're riled up, they're ready to crush bait, and then you can move on to the next zone. You, you can really cover water quickly with a tactic like this, opposed to sitting there and just dragging your Carolina rig over the point like this. Like, and granted, that works, that works. That works if you know where they're at. I don't have a graph. I don't know what they're at. I'm just blindly casting. I'm guessing. And that's the beauty, really, of bank fishing. It's just all that, like, unknown. You don't, you don't really know where they're at. You only know where they're at until you make a cast and get that donk, and then you can just <clears throat> put, some, put some hook on your meat, put some meat on your hook. You feel me? We are at the final spot of the day. Oh, grab rim. That's what's up. I was tooling around on Google Maps and I saw this beautiful little gem, a little public park. I've never fished here before, but just judging from the aerial view on Google, it looks clean. It's got grass. Should be good. I don't know. Sometimes these clear little ponds and lakes can be difficult in the summer months, but one cool thing about the clear water is generally speaking, you can get them on finessey stuff like a drop shot or big swim bait. Hopefully we can crack one of the big swim bait. Looks pretty shallow, but I don't know. Only one way to find out. There we go. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, dude. This might be a big one. What the hell did I just hook? What the hell is going on? Bro, what the hell? Did you hear my drag string? There's no way this is a bass. There's no way this is a bass. Even if I still have them, I don't think I have them. There's no way that I still have this fish. That was insane, dude. My drag screamed like a saltwater bear. Oh, I still have him. He's still there. I see him. What the hell? That was insane. He's got me in the grass. <gasps> that was insane. He's not bad. Oh, it's not a bad fish at all. <laughs> that was so cool, dude. As soon as it hit the water, this fish is on it. Come here, bud. Come here. Oh, he's not a bad one. For a pond fish? We'll take him. <laughs> this is so cool. This is like the beauty of just pond hopping, like looking on maps, just seeing what's around. This spot wasn't too far from where we were fishing previously, and it's got some pretty hungry fish. When you can throw finesse stuff in the summertime and catch them like this, you can't beat it. Wow, that was so aggressive. And it's just like a picture perfect fish. Nothing about this fish indicates that this is not a healthy fishery. It's, it's clean, it's grassy. I think the only thing it lacks maybe is depth, but they don't seem to mind. It's a quality bass. Catch you later, bud. Big old burly one. Just out in the middle of the, of the lake, just blind casting. <laughs> That's so cool, dude. Let's even get a couple more of those guys. Put it there. We are having a day. There's one. This might be a little bit better. Oh yeah, that's a much better fish. That's a much better fish. That one's got some girth. Stay out of that grass, girl. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. We'll take that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's that girth we're after. That's that girth. Maybe not the girth. Oh no, it's got, he's got a nice head. He's got a nice nog. Another one bites the dust on the dragon 
drop. Just drop right on their head. Boom. See you later. This corner's windblown, so I think that's one of the reasons why there's fish in here. Now they're just like perfect fish. Like just perfect. This pond is sauced. And I think there's some big ones in here too. I mean, I saw one nice one. I'm sure there's plenty more around the corner. Wow, nothing like finesse pond fishing. See you, dude. Bye. Bye bye, Lucille. Oh, she's swimming in the grass, and then she's out. Dude, it's so much fun. The the drag and drop right now is like an instant cheat code with these clear water fish. They probably haven't seen too much of this. I'm sure a lot of people come here with bobbers and worms, which you know teach their own. I love a little bob and worm action, but something about that little tantalizing tail action, the drag and drop just gets him going. Gets him going. And that wieners concludes today's urban pond hopping mission. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you want to see more videos like this. Be sure to give the video a like and subscribe and drop a comment. We are all ears when it comes to ideas. Kind of at this stage in YouTube where I've been on this joint for freaking ever. So I like coming back and revisiting videos like this that you guys seem to enjoy, but I'm also trying to reinvent myself. Oh, that's a terrible term. What's a better what's a better phrase? I'm, I'm just trying to think outside the box. You know, I've really filmed a lot these past couple of years and especially this year, working with Caleb and trying to figure out new ways to create content, stuff that has not ever seen the light of day when it comes to YouTube. So drop some comments, let me know if you guys have any ideas or some, just like some things you wanna see. Maybe some old videos that I, I should revisit or film again, but I will say this, we are working on some really awesome projects, uh, working on another on the border, working on some more casting concretes, trying to stick with the series, but also do videos like this that are kind of down to earth and back home and uh, kind of, you know, just pull at the heartstrings of the roots of what this channel is all about. But anyway, I'm gonna quit the sappiness. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Go out there, wet a line, do a bit of pond hopping yourself, and go crank them. As always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop.